Uber Pro Audio presents I'm here with Ian DeSalle from Billy Tell. Thank you for taking the time, time to speak with us. I really cool. appreciate it. Talk to me about your new album, Dead Silence. Uh, it came out late last year. Yep. Um, has been widely successful. Everyone's really loving it. You returned more to your roots from the first two albums. Um, mm -hmm taking kind of deviating from the style of the third one. Talk to me about the production because you produced the album yourself. Talk to me about how the production for Dead Silence went. Um, well for this this new album uh, the songs were back in the vein of the first and second record like a little bit more punk influenced and uh, we wanted to kind of go back to that big tight that tight sound the tight punk sound and um, we thought what better way to do it uh, but work with the same engineers that worked on Billy Town 2 uh, Eric Ratz and Kenny Long so uh, I ended up producing it and uh, the three of us got to work together and, and we basically just planned everything out where we're going to track the drums, we're going to track the guitars and uh, I worked on the songs until they were in top notch uh, shape and uh, then we went into the studio. So we went, ended up going out to the Armory in BC mm -hmm. which has got a great uh, live drum room and uh, I, would, I would love to go back there to track drums because it's just the best, best in my opinion. Um, and then we came back to Noble Street in Toronto and did um, all the bass and all the guitars there. Mm -hmm. And then we tracked all the vocals at our own studio, so... Right yeah. Now what everyone wants to know, the guitar <laughs> right? For the album, um, did you use any new amps or any new guitars uh, from the other albums that you recorded? Um, I've always used the 52 reissue uh, Telecaster. Uh, butterscotch one that I call crispy chicken <laughs> that I've used from day one. It's my favorite. I actually have two of them and, and no guitar sounds identical to each other. Mm -hmm. And the second one we call backup chicken <laughs> if anything was going to happen to crispy chicken. But uh, the backup chicken just doesn't sound the same as no. crispy chicken. So it's, it's uh, we've always used crispy chicken on everything we do. It's the main guitar on all four albums and uh, it's my favorite guitar. I don't tour with it because I don't ever want it to get lost or, yeah. or broken. Um, and so basically, when it comes to guitars, it's just I'll lay down all the all the tracks on on the main on that main with that main guitar, mm -hmm. and then go in and just start adding other guitars. Usually, um, I like to complement the Fender with a Gibson mm -hmm. as an overdub. So Gibsons kind of just sit in the background, and, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll record the choruses with uh, usually a Junior 57 reissue Junior or a 79 Silverbird Silverburst. I have a couple of those. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just tuck them in for courses when when the course is supposed to pop. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have like uh, you know an, another set of guitars come in to make it just jump out. Yeah. And for amps, are you still using just the Stevensons, or did you mix in some Marshalls? I know you were using a, a diesel for a while as well. Uh, we used a bit of this uh, of Stevenson on a couple songs. Um, I, I really like. I really think I found. Uh, uh, a really good combination of amps for my my particular tone, and it's uh, diesel uh, diesel VH4, mm -hmm. uh, my Comet uh, Concord, mm -hmm. and uh, my old 1962 Tremolox, which is kind of like the secret weapon because it, it's yeah. uh, it's uh, they only made those amps for like two years, 62 and 63, or 61 to 63, and they have they just they change the circuit afterwards, and, mm -hmm. and it's not the same sound. It's just got this really nice sparkly top end, and mm -hmm. and uh, has really pronounced mids. Um, so I love to have that amp in the mix, but the diesel does all the low end work, yeah. and uh, the Comet. I used to use a Comet 60, but I just that's the new amp on this album. It's, mm -hmm. I got the Comet Concord, and uh, it's my favorite amp now. <laughs> right, it's my favorite amp from the recording process. It's it's amazing. It's just really punchy, nice mids, and and really good um, reaction to your playing style. Like there's. Mm -hmm. uh, you can really hear hear a lot of the harmonics and stuff when you play, and, yeah. you, and your actual finger stuff. So it's good. Nice, nice. And that's one thing I actually wanted to ask you about: um, your consistency in tone from album to album. Y you have a very recognizable guitar tone, and I think most people who are familiar with your band, uh, if you hear just the music from a song, you kind of kick in that that's a Billy Talent song right. based yeah. on your guitar tone. Is that something that it's kind of an attitude of it, it's not broke, so why change it? Not really. I actually consciously go for that because yeah. it, I just when we were recording the first album, Gavin really kind of helped out with that, uh, helping us, you know, identify our sound and, and documenting that. And um, that's something that I've always been uh, aware of because when I was younger, there's one. Of, my favorite bands were like Rage Against the Machine mm -hmm. and, and Soundgarden. And as soon as you hear 
when you heard those songs, you're like, that's Tom Morello's guitar yeah. sound, because he's always using a neck pickup sound, yeah. like Fender Telecaster. And, uh, so I was really aware of that, and when, when we started recording our first record, I wanted to have my own sound, which is kind of like the telly sound with the bridge pickup. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always consistently tried to make, make every record sound the same guitar-wise yeah. so because of that. And I think uh, I think that's important because you, as a guitar player, you're it's like your voice, right? It's Absolutely. but it's a guitar, so you need to find some kind of signature sound that's gonna, you know, when people hear it, they're gonna be like, that's that guy. Yeah. And, and I definitely conscious to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's working. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that being said, for your live rig, you generally only play strats for the most part. Yeah. Is that uh, is there any particular reason do you just feel more comfortable playing a strat, or does it just give you more tonal options while you're playing live? Yeah, I think it's more tonal options because um, the records I use Telecasters for the main guitars, and then uh, Gibson uh, Juniors and and Silverburst for the for the overdub guitars. So when you get on a stage, the telly doesn't really give you that big, you know, punch yeah. in the face when you get to the chorus, right? So I found that the Strat with a with a humbucker mm -hmm. will give you a little bit of that telly sound, a little bit of that Gibson overdub sound. So I can get both with one guitar, and that's that's primarily why I play Strats live. And is it a, a stock American uh, Fat Strat? Um, it's uh, the American Deluxe Fat Strat HH, but um. It's uh, the pickups I, I've swapped out for, uh, right now I have Atomic pickups in them. Mm -hmm. One has Atomic and one has Hot Rod pickups. And uh, yeah, I really like them, they're, they're good. Right, and for amps, is it uh, the Stevenson yeah, on stage? Yeah, I've got uh, two, two Stevensons. I just run one of them, one, the other one's a backup. Mm -hmm. But uh, I use my Stevenson as the main sound, and then we have a diesel BH4 with a diesel cab and a uh, a common Concord as well. So pretty much what I was using in the studio really? with the addition of the Stevenson. The Stevenson I really love is the live amp. It's mm. uh, it's got three gain stages and, and I can uh, I can uh, get you know an all in one sound out of the Stevenson. Where in the studio it's like you have all these options of yeah. different amps. So it's a uh, it's a great all in one type amp. Right. All right. Um, so moving to your pedal board, um, in the studio, uh, you, you post a lot of really great videos um, about the effects you're using and everything like that. Did you do anything different, uh, use any new fuzzes or anything like that for the new album? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's actually a couple of, well I've always used the Zvex Woolly Mammoth mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I used a Klon pedal a lot on this record and that's one of, one of my, I just kind of discovered it on this, this record and uh, um, a couple of friends of mine. Lent, lent me their clones and I was like, this this pedal is amazing because it, it really just takes uh, your tone and, and just adds a little bit of creaminess to it. Doesn't mm. change it at all. It's it's pretty transparent. Um, that's what I like about it. Yeah. And uh, so I use that a lot. Yeah, the Claude Centaur. Those are. And um, another pedal that we used. Uh, I wanted to get like a fuzzed out bass sound for mm. surprise surprise. And uh, we we looked at all these different fuzz bass pedals, but a lot of them just blow them out and doesn't have that envelope kind of sound. Yeah. So. Uh, we found a pedal called, uh, it's actually called Big John's Hairy Balls, and uh, it's made by Big John FX out of nice. Belgium, and I got to meet uh, John, actually when we were out in Belgium. Nice. And uh, yeah, so he's uh, he's uh, given us a bunch of pedals, and I've been using his Obama Watt, and uh, <laughs> he's got the best name. That's names. great. And, his, and the Big John uh, Hairy Balls lot. Right on. Yeah. And then a couple other pedals, uh, Vincent uh, L.I. from Via, uh, uh, VL effects in Paris mm -hmm. had also given me uh, it's like a, a boost pedal mm -hmm. OD1 I think it's called the OD100 and I've used that because it's very very transparent it doesn't mm -hmm. add any color to the sound just for like uh, basically just volume increases and, and like clean solos and stuff like that where I'll use a clon for like dirty solos and yeah. stuff like that yeah. awesome um, and so going to your live rig again are obviously you don't really have the centaurs on the road or anything like that uh, do you have like kind of a stripped down pedal board or are you able to duplicate everything you did on the album live more or less? Yeah, fairly well I can do that because uh, I got a Bradshaw, Bradshaw, Jim Bradshaw made a, a, a pedal system for me mm -hmm. and so I've got all the pedals in a rack and uh, I can assign all the pedals to one switcher which is great yeah. and uh, I can kind of replicate the effects of like say doing an octave overdub mm -hmm. guitar wise by using a POG with uh, with like a little reverb on it and, and the contortion pedal and things like that. So yeah, I have a, a Bradshaw. That's like the, it, it can combine so many different pedals. You just pro program which switch. And, yeah. And, and when that part comes up in the song, then I just hit that switch. So right on. Do you have any gear nightmare stories? Anything ever bad happen? <laughs> 
Thankfully not. Nothing really, really bad has happened. Um, uh, actually, the first time we played, I was so bummed out because it was the first time playing England, and we were playing at this small club, and my whole rig went down. Like this, my, uh, it was my head, because stuff gets sh like moved around when you're transporting yeah. it, right? And, so by the time it got there, it, it was working fine to sound check, and then I, we had all these reporters and journalists for the first time in the UK coming to our show, and the rig just, the whole thing just went down for like 20 minutes, and and uh, so we had to like wait 20 minutes while our tech was fixing it in the back, and it was turned out there just be a couple broken tubes, and mm -hmm. yeah, it was kind of embarrassing. So I always check your tubes. <laughs> All right, so uh, do you have any other plans for the rest of you? You have a pretty extensive tour lined up almost till yeah. the end of summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, we, we've been touring since last May. We did a bunch of festivals last summer, and then uh, we've done a, now for Dead Sounds, we've done a full UK tour, full German tour. Uh, went to Australia and did Sandwich Festival mm -hmm. just a couple months ago, and then we started the Canadian tour. So we're going to continue touring this record probably right till the end of the year. Right on. And dare I ask, are there plans for a new album? Um, sort of in the works? <laughs> Well, I, I try to write as much as possible on the road, so when we get home, there's something there where we can start to snowball songs with, so yeah. I think that's, uh, I mean, I've been writing a lot on the road, which is actually, it's great, so yeah. I, think, I think, you know, sooner or later, after, after we get home from this album cycle, mm -hmm. we'll hopefully get right back in the studio, because uh, I, I really enjoy being in the studio. I was, I was going to just kind of end with that, I was going to ask, you, you strike me as someone who spends a lot of their free time playing guitar and writing guitar. Yeah. Do you kind of do that um, almost as an exercise to kind of keep your, your playing on your toes, for lack of a better term, just to kind of keep progressing your, your own personal playing? Yeah, it, I think it's, uh, well, not only that, it's, it's great to keep playing and keep rehearsing mm -hmm. to get better at what you do, but it's just like, a, I, I look at it as a necessity in, in a way. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's like therapy or playing sports for me. It's a, I just, I love being in the studio, I love recording stuff. I love learning. It's it's all about learning, like learning new parts, uh, coming up with new parts, and and getting different sounds and things like that. So to me, it's like you know, playing recreational hockey or something. Because so, I don't play hockey. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, thank you very much for taking Great. time to speak. Yeah, thank really you. Great interview. Thank you. Cheers.